8. The Second Pearl Harbor Attack Many people are unaware that the Japanese attempted to launch a second attack on Pearl Harbor on March 4, 1942. Known as Operation K, its primary objectives were to observe the damage caused by the first attack, damage salvage efforts, and inflict sheer terror on the people living in Hawaii and on Americans in general. Plans initially called for five Kawanishi H-8K Emily flying boats to conduct a nighttime raid over the naval base at Oahu during full moonlight for maximum visibility. But before the incursion, the number of attacking aircraft was cut down to two, and they also encountered foul weather. American radar detected the planes, prompting US forces to try and intercept the aircraft. They failed due to the weather, but the Japanese planes were no better off. One of the HAKs dropped its load of four 550-pound bombs into the ocean, while the others missed the mark by roughly eight miles, narrowly avoiding a school building but causing no serious damage beyond some shattered windows. The raid accomplished the goal of causing fear among Americans of a Japanese invasion, but was otherwise a huge failure. When a second Operation K mission was planned, the US military was well aware of it. American forces were one step ahead of the Japanese and managed to foil the attack. 7. Churchill's Consequences Within weeks of being liberated by the Allies in 1944, Greece was well on the path to its own bloody civil war between nationalist and communist forces. Winston Churchill became fearful that the very resistance movement he'd supported, known as the National Liberation Front, or EAM, was being dangerously influenced by the Communist Party and would hamper his efforts to restore the Greek king to power, which is why, on December 3rd of that year, he authorized British troops to open fire on a crowd of demonstrators in Athens as they chanted in support of the Allies. To make matters even more disturbing, the attack was carried out with the help of Nazi supporters and collaborators. A total of 28 people died, and hundreds more were left injured. The incident sparked a series of clashes that occurred over the next several weeks in what became known as the Decem Vriana, also sometimes called the Battle of Athens. Royal Air Force bombers struck various leftist strongholds in what still seen today by many in Greece as an ultimate betrayal, while the event is seldom included in the history lessons elsewhere. The British-backed Kingdom of Greece won the battle and would later go on to win the three-year civil war that followed receiving funding from the US after Britain withdrew its support in 1946. 6. Celtic Wood Nicknamed the Terrible Tenth for the fighting spirit they displayed in the trenches of the Western Front during World War I, the 10th Battalion of the 1st Australian Division had several successes under its belt when it was tasked with raiding a German stronghold in Belgium on October 9, 1917. It was the first day of the Battle of Polkapel between Britain and Germany, and the plan was for the Terrible Tenth to carry out the attack on Celtic Wood in the Belgian province of West Flanders. As a diversionary raid, its purpose was to trick the Germans into thinking it was part of the main advance into the region. Under the command of 22-year-old Lieutenant Frank Scott, 78 men and 7 officers advanced on Celtic Wood at dawn with plans to swiftly and fiercely blow up German dugouts and retreat on a signal flare. The attack failed to achieve the result the Allies had hoped for, although British war correspondents reported it as a victory. Only some of the terrible tenth fighters made it back alive. In what's been described as the greatest mystery regarding Australia's participation in the First World War, only 14 of the 85 soldiers who charged on Celtic Wood were ever seen again, and 37 of them remain officially unaccounted for to this day. They seemingly vanish into thin air, and there's no mention of the raid in German war records. Some believe the Germans simply managed to massacre most of the attacking force and buried them in a mass grave. Others have attributed the strange disappearance to a supernatural event. Another theory, based on war diaries, suggests that the incident was no different than many other tragic skirmishes that happened throughout the conflict. That same hypothesis proposes that the long-standing myth of the terrible tenth disappearances can be explained by clerical errors, misreporting, and the lack of situational awareness on the battlefield, known as the fog of war. 5. The Battle of Los Angeles On the night of February 23, 1942, 
Less than three months after the US entered World War II following the Japanese bombing of Pearl Harbor, a Japanese submarine surfaced off the coast of Santa Barbara, California, and fired over a dozen artillery shells at an oil field and refinery. There were no casualties, and the damage was minor. But the incident happened at a time when many Americans believed the US was in imminent danger of an attack, sparking widespread fear and paranoia. The following night, the Office of Naval Intelligence warned military units along the California coast to expect an attack within the next 10 hours. Then, later that same evening, military radar detected an enemy presence roughly 120 miles west of Los Angeles, prompting authorities to order a total blackout as air raid sirens blared throughout the city. At around 3 a.m., troops unleashed a barrage of anti-aircraft and machine gun fire into the sky after receiving reports about an unidentified object hovering in the distance. The Americans fired 1,400 rounds of anti-aircraft ammunition into the night before receiving the all-clear to stop shooting more than an hour later. The military determined that there had been no enemy aircraft nearby, despite wild reports of Japanese planes flying in formation, dropping bombs, and even a plane crashing into a street in Hollywood. Thankfully, nobody was seriously injured, although several buildings were damaged from the gunfire. Conflicting reports were released in the wake of the bizarre ordeal leading to even more questions about the so-called Battle of Los Angeles that remain unanswered to this day. But what do you think? Was there really an object in the sky that night, or did the military fall victim to a bizarre case of mass hysteria? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe while you're at it. 4. The Shot That Started World War I the Austro-Hungarians are widely credited with firing the shot that officially started World War I on July 29, 1914. This was when two cannons on the heavy gunboat SMS Bodrog fired shells at Serbian positions along the Danube River, marking the beginning of the devastating four-year conflict that left Europe in shambles. This part of the conflict's history is essentially undisputed, but there are conflicting accounts as to who fired the first shot on behalf of the British Empire. According to military tradition, a cavalry drummer named Corporal E. Thomas fired the first British bullet in Belgium on August 22, 1914, when his squad encountered four German cavalrymen. But nobody was harmed in the skirmish. Ten days earlier, however, a West African soldier serving in the British military named Alhaji Grunshi fired at German forces in Togo, where they were guarding a wireless communication station. The Australians may also have a valid case for arguing that they fired the war's first shot on behalf of the British. On August 5, 1914, a crew led by artillery sergeant John Perdue shot at the German vessel SS Fowles in waters just south of Melbourne before either of the two contenders that have been mentioned so far. It was the day after Britain declared war on Germany, and the Fowles was trying to slip out of port unnoticed when the shooting began. The ship continued to sail away, even after the Australian battery fired warning shots, and was taken back to the bay under the watch of an armed guard. 3. The USS Cyclops Built for the United States Navy in the years leading up to World War I, the USS Cyclops originally operated as a bulk coal carrier called a collier. At nearly 550 feet long, it was the Navy's largest and fastest fuel ship at the time. During the war, the Cyclops transported medical staff and supplies to a French hospital, then returned to North America and served along the east coast of the US for the next few years. In 1918, the ship began ferrying cargo back and forth between America and Brazil. On February 16, 1918, the ship left Rio de Janeiro for Baltimore with a load of manganese ore. During the voyage, the captain requested a detour to Barbados due to engine issues, which he suspected might be caused by an overload of cargo. The request was granted, and the Cyclops was never seen or heard from again after departing from the island. No distress signal was sent, and all 309 souls on board vanished, along with the ship, in what remains the greatest non-combat loss of lives in American naval history. A massive search effort ensued, but it failed to turn up any sign of the missing vessel, such as an oil slick or debris. 
There are various theories about what may have happened to the Cyclops, blaming everything from German spies to the Bermuda Triangle, aliens from outer space, and the captain, who was allegedly a drunk and in no position to command a ship. It's also possible that the crew was unfamiliar with how to properly operate the ship with its heavy load of manganese ore, a material used in steel production that the vessel didn't normally transport. But what do you think really happened to the USS Cyclops? Let us know in the comments down below. 2. The Big Stoop On September 1, 1944, an Allied B-24 Liberator bomber took off from Indonesia's Wangdi Island for a bombing mission in the South Pacific. Manned by an 11-member crew of young men from all over the US, the aircraft lacked a nickname, although they considered calling it the Big Stoop. After flying more than 700 miles, the B-24 prepared to bomb its enemy targets over Koror, Palau, from an altitude of 17,000 feet. As the plane approached, it took two direct hits to the left wing, causing the engine to burst into flames. By the time the pilot attempted to put out the fire by banking hard to the right, at least two crew members were seen parachuting from the aircraft. The B-24's fuselage broke into two as it plunged out of the sky, straight into the ocean. All 11 members were declared killed in action, but their exact fate remained a mystery for years to come. A 10-year search to find the Big Stoop and deliver definitive answers to the soldiers' families finally began in 1994. Pat Scannon, who founded the nonprofit called Project Recover to bring the fallen soldiers home, thought it would be much easier to find the plane than it was. Finally, after a decade of one fruitless search after another based on what turned out to be a mapping error, the B-24 was located. As of 2009, the partial remains of eight crew members had been recovered and returned to surviving relatives so they could finally be properly laid to rest. 1. Who Killed the Red Baron Manfred von Richthofen, better known as the Red Baron, was a World War I German Air Force fighter pilot who quickly rose to international fame for his superior flying skills. Widely considered the complex ace of aces, he was officially credited with securing 80 air combat victories during his service as a member of the elite flying circus squadron. During an attack on some British and Canadian fighter planes over France on April 21, 1918, the Red Baron got right on the tail of an aircraft being flown by Canadian amateur pilot Lieutenant Wilfred May. After chasing after May through gunfire without being hit, Richthofen turned to avoid a direct attack and was struck in the chest by a stray bullet, severely damaging his heart and lungs. He most likely died within a minute of being shot. In the meantime, his plane stalled and entered a steep decline before crashing into a field near the village of vaux somme in northern France. To this day, nobody knows who's responsible for the Red Baron's death. Credit for the fatal shot initially went to Canadian Captain Arthur Roy Brown, who was involved in the pursuit between Rigdolfin and May. But Brown never spoke much of the incident, which would be unusual for someone who'd accomplished such a boastworthy feat. Perhaps Brown was a humble man, or maybe there's another explanation. Experts have concluded that the Red Baron was most likely shot from ground level by an anti-aircraft gun, in which case the most likely candidates for who the shooter might have been would include three Australian gunners. Out of the three, some researchers have pointed towards Sergeant Cedric Pompkin as being in the most likely position for executing the shot based on the angle at which it struck Richtofen. There are also a handful of other factors that make the situation unusual including the Red Baron's atypical behavior during the skirmish. He flew dangerously low over enemy territory and appeared to become overly fixated on his target, which stands in stark contrast to his highly advanced skills. It also speaks to his possible state of mind at the time. Some speculate he was suffering brain damage from a recent injury, which would help to explain his sudden poor judgment and deadly risk-taking. What other World War topics would you like us to cover next? Let us know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye!